Moisture Emission Testing All concrete slabs and wood subfloors should be checked for excessive moisture emission rate and pH. This kit contains a pre-measured amount of calcium chloride, pH paper, and distilled water. The test takes a minimum of 60 hours to run or a maximum of 72 hours. The kit comes with a mailer envelope to return the sample to the supplier for an official report. As moisture is absorbed, the weight of the calcium chloride increases. The difference between the starting weight and the finish weight is used in a mathematical formula to compute a moisture emission rate that is given in pounds of moisture emitted from 1,000 square feet in a 24-hour period. For all Shaw carpets, the moisture emission rate shall be less than 5 pounds. A minimum of three test kits are used for the first 1,000 square feet and then one for each additional 1,000 square feet. Follow the instructions carefully. pH is a measure of alkalinity or acidity. The pH of a substrate shall be between 5 and 9 for standard multi-purpose glue installations. If the pH is outside of this range, corrective measures are needed. pH is checked by applying a small amount of distilled water from the kit to an exposed area of concrete. Match the color on the pH strip to the package. In this case, it falls within range. All installations should be installed in roll sequence. Roll sequence is important because pattern length in sequence rolls will match better than rolls that are installed out of sequence. Also, the probability of side match or color difference at the seam is greatly reduced when the installation sequence is followed. Roll sequence can be determined in two ways. The yellow and white roll ticket attached to each roll of carpet contains a sequence number in a block labeled SEQ. The proper installation sequence of the job can be ascending or descending order of the sequence numbers. A situation that commonly occurs on a job site is that tickets are no longer attached to the rolls or the entire job was cut at a warehouse and then delivered to the job. It is important that the cut table operator understand the job is to be cut in sequence. If the ticket is no longer with the carpet, there is an ink back stamp or white adhesive label on the back of the carpet that contain a date and time. The time is in 24 hour or military format. Rolls and cuts can be sequenced by the time that is printed on the back of the label. The row cut row cut method is preferred seaming cutting method for all carpets with the exception of printed carpet. Printed carpet seam cutting will be covered later in this video. First, use a screwdriver, awl, or row runner to separate the rows of yarn along one selvage edge. It is recommended that at least one inch be trimmed from each edge with consideration given to pattern match. Once the row is run on each selvage edge, use a cushion back cutter to cut between the rows of yarn. The cushion back cutter is made with two blades. Use the blade closest to the seam edge. As you can see here, only one extra row of yarn can cause a seam to look bad. When installing pattern carpet, Care must be exercised to row cut according to pattern match and yarn sequence. The next seam cutting method to be covered is the row cut trace cut method. Use a screwdriver to separate the row on one selvage edge, trimming at least one inch from the selvage edge, and then use the cushion back cutter to trim between these separated rows. Overlap the cut edge over the remaining edge two to three inches and use the cushion back cutter to trace along the first cut edge while cutting the remaining edge. 
This method is not to be used on pattern carpets. This method works well on commercial loop carpets, again without patterns. First, dry lay all the carpet according to roll sequence. Remember, the sequence can be determined by the date, time, back stamp, or label on the carpet back or by the roll tag and CQ number. Roll sequence is a starting place but can vary depending on pattern length as we will discuss shortly under pattern elongation. Row cut the carpet along the selvage edge that will butt to the wall. This step is important in order to keep the carpet aligned with the length walls. Continue to lay out the remaining breadths of carpet and trim the seams according to pattern match. As you can see, the pattern lines are not straight across the width. We have both bow and skew in this carpet. Bow is a curved pattern line across the width, but the selvage edges are square with the selvage edge. With skew, the pattern lines are straight but are angled or out of square with the selvage edge. With this carpet, we have both a curved line across the width or bow and this curve pattern is angled across the width or skew. Determine the amount of direction of bow and or skew with a laser square or string and framing square. We have placed masking tape along the pattern in order to make it more visible to you the viewer. We are using a laser square to determine that our skew is two and one quarter inch as you can see from our tape measure. This is beyond Shaw's manufacturing tolerance for bow and skew of one and a half inch across the 12 foot width. Even with the skew bow beyond manufacturing tolerances, this carpet can be successfully installed with the pattern line straight. It is important to remember that carpet that is within bow or skew tolerance has an installed tolerance of zero. These tolerances are within what a qualified installer is able to correct to zero or straight. Select a prominent width wall and cut the carpet exactly on pattern across the width. If cut and positioned correctly, a bowed pattern will have both seam edges turned up the wall with the center of the carpet just touching the wall. A skewed pattern will be turned up the wall on one edge and the other side of the breadth will be just touching the wall. In our installation, we have both bow and skew. The left side of each breadth is turned up the wall only about one inch and the right seam edge is turned up our wall two and one quarter inch, the amount of the skew. Position each drop in the same manner. Now the carpet is dry laid in the entire area by roll sequence and the seams were cut by the proper method. Fold the carpet back from the wall and spread Shaw 1000 or Shaw 1200 adhesive using a 1 8 inch U notch trowel. Allow the adhesive to become tacky and string to the touch before laying the carpet into the adhesive. Fans or air movers will greatly reduce the time needed for the adhesive to become tacky. Fold the carpet into the adhesive and roll. Remember, we have a bow and skew in this carpet. The outside edge pattern has a small hook in the pattern that must be straightened. Using a mini stretcher, pull the bowed or skewed edges down off the wall and net the wall with the carpet widthwise edge. This will cause a bubble that tapers off toward the center of the breadth. Use the mini stretcher to move this bubble to the opposite end of the breadth. As the bubble is moved down the wall, the pattern deviation is corrected behind the bubble. Roll again. Now we are ready to construct the first seam. You will notice that we have taped the seam in order to make matching a small pattern easier. Try this technique the next time you have a small pattern installation. It is much easier than counting the number of patterns in say 12 feet of length to determine which side of the seam has the short pattern and long pattern. Basically, all we are going to do is make a larger pattern out of a small one. Here's how it's done. 
After all the carpet has been dry laid in the area to be installed, start with your first seam and match the pattern at an end wall. Place a short piece of tape across the seam and cut the tape directly over the seam so that half the tape is on one side of the seam and half is on the other. Use a knee kicker or mini stretcher to match the pattern along the seam. Shift the short side to match the longer side. Every three to four feet, place additional tape across the seam and cut it in the same manner as the first. When the opposite end of the seam is matched, go back and look at the first piece of tape. The distance between the two strips of tape is the total distance the pattern is off along the entire length of the seam. Repeat this process for each seam. Fold the carpet on each side of the seam back. Now we spread adhesive with the U-notch trowel. Use fans to reduce open time. Once the adhesive is tacky, fold in the first side of the seam. We use a hawk bill knife to create a trough in the adhesive along the seam so that the adhesive does not build up on the tip of the sealer bottle. Apply shawl seam sealer to the seam edge of the carpet. Apply the sealer to the cut edge. Seam sealer is required on all of Shaw's broad loom carpet. Fold the remaining side into the adhesive. Using a mini stretcher again, pull the carpet off the wall so that the carpet butts to the wall. Again, notice the bubble that appears when we do this. This bubble needs to be moved to the opposite end of the seam. As the bubble is moved down the seam, the pattern is straightened. At the opposite end of the seam, this bubble is needed to close the gap where the carpet bows away from the wall. Some installers start on this end and stretcher the carpet to close the gap, but with our method, we are only twisting the carpet around, not stretching it. Stretching can cause more pattern deviations than what you started with. Don't panic if you have bubbles like this one. These are common and will be flat when you reach the end of the seam. With a bow or skew, the seam edge or edges will have to be moved the greatest distance to straighten the pattern. The center section of the carpet will have to be moved less distance to straighten the pattern. Match the masking tape edges as you move down the seam. Once the bubbles are moved to the opposite end and are flat, use the mini stretcher to close any gaps at the seam and give the smaller pattern match, not the tape pattern, any final adjustments necessary. Tractor the seam. Use a string or laser to gauge pattern straightness. Stay nails may be helpful, but are often not needed with tacky adhesive. Let's take another look at what our installation looked like before we straightened it. Now let's look at how our finished installation has straight pattern lines and a matched pattern at all seams. By using these techniques, you can make many satisfied customers and a job that you can be proud of. For pattern elongation, dry lay the area, trim the seams, and match the pattern at the starting point in the room. Use masking tape to create a big visual pattern in order to determine which side of the seam needs to be stretched to obtain the match. Here we have our pattern taped, the seams cut, and the pattern is matched in the center of our seam. The dead man is placed across the seam where the pattern is matched. Use the power stretcher with the short pole to stretch the shorter pattern side of the seam to match the longer pattern side. Angle the power stretcher toward the seam to prevent the seam from gaping open during stretching. Work in short sections. Carpet breadths need to be installed so that the longest pattern is installed first and the shortest pattern is installed last. Here's a close-up of why it is important to get the pattern matched. Watch how the seam disappears when the pattern is dead on. <laughs>